much, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to tonight's show. I'm Dave Thomas, and I'm going to make sure that tonight's show is particularly upbeat and cheerful. I've been a little depressed lately, uh, and I blame my wife. She dragged me to an Ingmar Bergman film festival the other night. I thought she said it was a Candace Bergen festival, otherwise I never would have gone. Those Swedish filmmakers are so obsessed with the dark side of life. I mean, you know, buttered popcorn, chocolate-covered raisins, and death. Is it me, or do those two go together? Those three go together. Anyway, then there's the subtitles. Now, admittedly, I'm not a speed reader, but, you know, by the time you look down to read the subtitles, look back up to see what's going on, it's changed, and something else is going on. It's another thing to bum me out. And this guy here, for example, uh, Max von Sydow, I don't think he'd be particularly flattered by, by this picture of him, but well, we, we whipped it up in a hurry. Anyway, he's made lots of movies in America, and he's a great actor, but he always plays depressing roles. For example, he was Father Marin in The Exorcist. Then he was the assassin in Three Days of the Condor. Not exactly a fun part. And even in Hannah and Her Sisters, a Woody Allen movie, he plays this suicidal lover whose girlfriend is cheating on him. He gets the bummer role. I mean, why can't they put him in something cheerful like uh, Pee Wee Herman's next movie, you know? So, Pee Wee, how much do you want for your bicycle? I'll give you 100 American dollars. Uh, no way, it's not for sale. All right, then. You'll leave me no choice. I have to kill myself. <laughs> I guess it wouldn't work. Anyway, I'm afraid the Swedes are terminally depressed, and no matter what Max does, he'll always be obsessed with the dark side of life. <laughs> so, hot enough for you? Yeah, it's a scorcher. Yeah. Just a trim, please. Would you like a bowl of cereal to start? Some usually, perhaps. This is, what's that? A hearty Swiss mixture of oats, nuts, and dates. Uh, gee, no thanks. Uh, maybe just that trim. As you wish. You know, I've been thinking a lot about death lately. It's funny. Oh, why is that? Well, because sooner or later we must all face it. But for some reason, some of us must face it in more bloody and terrible ways than others. Good grief. I have this recurring dream, you know, that I'm in an airplane. And for some reason, the pilot decides to deploy the ground spoilers at 35,000 feet. So the plane goes into a steep dive, but also a spin. And everyone is screaming and crying, and hand baggages flailing around like popcorn. And everyone knows we're going to die, but it takes 20 minutes for the plane to crash because we're coming from seven miles up. And then, next thing, I'm out of my body, and I see myself sitting bolt upright in an airline chair in a farmer's field, charred and black. And an FAA inspector approaches me, and as she walks by, my head falls off into my lap with a soft black puff. And he screams. So, do you have dreams? Are you finished yet? No. I'm still feathering the back. There. It's very nice. <laughs> you know, I've often thought that decapitation is the most humiliating way to die. Look, I, I don't want to hear this. Because once the head is severed, the body is running around like some red fountain spurting blood everywhere and the head is lying there on the ground like a turtle helpless but forced to watch it all i hope you finish because i'm leaving be careful of the razor I'm shaving the back of your neck you're insane what kind of maniac would force a fellow human being to listen to such horrible monstrous diatribes you must be a very sick person if you can't think of anything better to say than that calm down calm yourself but we start all over from the very beginning. You should have had some of that muesli I told you about. It calms you. So, my friend, hot enough for you? We'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> 